So the hook killer is finally revealed, and Dex and Joss do the dirty dirty. This is the Port Charles Podcast. Hello fellow GH fans and welcome to the Port Charles Podcast. This is episode 10 and yes, the very first video edition of the Port Charles Podcast. So Tuesday's episode, January 3rd, we had the hook killer finally revealed. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but here we are. And the hook killer is none other than Heather Weber. How does this make any sense? How does somebody who is locked up, able to get out and commit all these attacks and these killings? And please, please, writers, don't go with a twin storyline here. Please don't tell us that there is some long lost twin of Heather Weber out there that's committing all these attacks. Um... But it's going to be interesting to see how they write themselves out of this. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense on the surface. Maybe they have something spectacular in mind. I don't know. I hope so. Hopefully. I don't know how you write and work your way out of this corner that you've now painted yourself into. But we had Jocelyn on the docks. Um, The hook killer comes out attacks her or tries to attack her jocelyn being her mother's daughter fights back and Britt comes to her rescue the hook killer then goes after Britt, but of course dex shows up because wherever jocelyn is at any moment in time dex has to be there so he shows up shoots the hook killer in the arm despite dex being a former military guy and I would assume pretty proficient with a handgun, doesn't hit her in the body, shoots her in the arm, and I pray he was not aiming for the arm because what happened if he would have messed up and shot Britt in the face? I mean, I guess, you know, Britt wouldn't have had to worry about going out thanks to some disease. She would have been just shot in the face, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, so the hook killer runs off. Britt stays at the pier there. Dex gets Jocelyn. They go off. And Britt's there to give the story to the cops. Also, we had the appearance of Esme. Spencer and Trina are on the Haunted Star. They're out on the, on, on the outside of it. And they hear a noise. All of a sudden, they turn around and Esme shows up. And she goes to say something. Collapses passes out apparently she has hypothermia because i'm assuming spoon island is right next to the haunted star and esme didn't already suffer from hypothermia and die on the swim from windermere to the haunted star so apparently they must just be right next to each other i don't know um the only way that makes any logical sense Esme shows up. She gets taken to General Hospital. Spencer calls Elizabeth because Elizabeth was once attacked by the hook killer, who they still believe to be Esme. Not knowing that Elizabeth has been helping Nicholas keep Esme captive this whole time, because Nicholas is freaking out because Esme's gone. Now he's really freaking out because she's been found. So they rush to General Hospital. And of course, Dante, the only police officer on the scene, and it's always a detective. You notice it's never like just regular street cops that show up to question anybody. It's always either a detective or the police commissioner. Maybe they just are running out of cops. I don't know. Um, You would think that they wouldn't have suspended Chase since they obviously have such a need for regular police officers on the PCPD. So they show up to General Hospital. Dante wants to go question Esme. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that Esme is not going to give up Nicholas and Elizabeth on this. I think it's going to be one of those things where she just pulls in, I don't remember what happened, or I was on the run, I fell in 
to the harbor. I swam, got to the Haunted Star. I don't really remember a whole lot in between there. I don't think she's going to give Nicholas and Elizabeth up because she still needs, she's still going to need help with this baby, provided that the baby is still alive and well. She's going to need help, and I think she's going to hold this over Nicholas and Elizabeth's head. I have a really good theory, and I'm, probably, I'm going to come back and do another video about my theory. Not necessarily what I think is going to happen with Esme, but I've got a really cool idea that I think that um, if I was writing, this is what I would do with Esme, but I'll save that for another video. So other than that, not really a whole lot happened on Tuesday's episode. We had some really sweet moments between Maxie and Obrecht, which I thought were very touching, kind of talking about Maxie's past relationships and their bonding over Nathan and Maxie assuring Liesl that no matter, you know, if she does one day find the man of her dreams, which, hey, Maxie, right here, this guy, just saying, um, that she still won't ever forget Nathan. And by the way, Maxie, I'm totally okay with that. I mean, if you want to, you know, this guy right here, this guy, you could remember Nathan all you want to. I have no problem with that. I am not the jealous kind. So other than that, nothing really happened. Carly and Drew were late to Britt's birthday party. You would think that they had better timing skills than to show up after midnight. Then we had some boring conversation between the two about the previous year's New Year's. And then they talked so much about wanting to go someplace warm, but yet they still stayed out in the cold on the pier. I don't know. Dex and Jocelyn finally doing the dirty, dirty. Um, I guess Jocelyn just can't get around to breaking up with Cameron. You know, we everybody's got to be a cheater, I guess, in Port Charles. Nobody can just, you know, this takes me back to, what was it, a week or so ago when Austin and Maxie broke up. And they, they had a conversation like adults. And they just said, hey, look. It's not going to work out. You're a good person. I'm a good person. This just doesn't work. And you break up. That's how it works in the real world. Instead, we've got old cheating Jocelyn over here just jumping on the couch with Dex. And it's like, Cameron who? And rather than going and telling Cameron, you know, trying to spare his feelings somewhat, you know what's going to happen. You know he's going to catch these two at the worst possible moment. I mean, I guess the worst possible moment just happened. But instead of them talking to each other, I mean, and by that I mean Cameron and Jocelyn, rather than talking to each other like adults, granted, I know they're still young, and I know that Jocelyn likes to still talk to her friends like she's 13, especially when it comes to relationships, Rather than just talking to each other and saying, hey, this doesn't work anymore. I'm not feeling it anymore. I just want to be friends. Whatever the case. Jocelyn's just going to keep doing this song and dance with Dex. And Cameron's going to end up getting seriously hurt over this whole thing. So anyway, folks, that's all I've got. That's it for Tuesday. Again, Hook Killer revealed. They're going to have to pay off this Heather Weber thing. Um, I just don't know how you get to it. Dex and Joss, what do you think? Is, is Jocelyn ever going to come clean with Cameron? Is she going to break up with him? Or is Cameron going to catch them in a bad situation? Anyways, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to bring more of these video podcasts. I'm, I'm not going to come onto YouTube and do audio podcasts anymore. It's just going to strictly be videos. Again, be looking for my next video. I'm probably going to do here in just a little bit. I'm going to do my theory of what I think the writers should do with Esme Prince and the Cassadines going forward. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. This is the Port Charles Podcast.